before we start today's video, I would like to take a moment and say thanks to all my patrons. I wouldn't be able to keep doing this without you guys, so thank you so much for your awesome support. I would also like to say special thanks to Richter for his tier 3 sub again this month. In this video, we are going to continue to work on our quest giver. And as you can see right now, we can click on the quest giver and we can see the description of the quest. However, down here we can see the objectives. I actually would like to remove that because there's no reason for us to see the progression of the objectives when we get a quest from a quest giver. Uh, we would only like to see that in our quest log. Of course, if you want to keep it, you can keep it, but then you will have to add some functionality for updating it as well. So just to make it simpler for us, I would like to go to the show quest info and then I would like to reduce it a little so that I don't take in the objectives. And when I remove the objectives here from show quest info inside quest giver window, I can go down here and remove this part right there. And I would not like the objectives either there. Okay, so I think I'm good. Let's try to save and see how it looks. So now when I click on the quest giver, it should look more like just information about the quest as you can see gather health potions i want you to collect five health potions for me okay and the reason that i want this is because you can still quick click on the quest if even if you have it when we go back um and when you click on the quest it should just tell you what you need to do and if you uh, have completed you can click the complete button right there now it's an accept button okay let's try to make the back button work first to do that, we will have to go to our quest giver window again, and in here we need to create a new function. We don't have it right. Nope. We need to create a new function called public void back. So back is going to bring us back to the original side, and we have the back button here. It should be set active to false when we go back, and we also have our accept button, and it should also set active as false. So we need to hide both both buttons. And then we need to show our quest. Do we have a show quest info? Show quests right there. So we need to call that. So let's just call show quests. And we need a quest giver. We have a quest giver right there. We need to pass him in. Okay, so that's the back button. Let's try to save this and see if it works or if we have forgotten to set something. Maybe we have a null reference. Who knows? Let's see. We save this. We click. We want to get the help potion. I go back, and I haven't assigned the button. Yay! That was like very, very exciting, huh? Uh, see quest giver window and back button, and we click the plus, and we take the quest giver window, drag down here, select the function quest giver window. And you can't see this as a little off screen. Sorry about that, but you have to select the back function. Quest giver window dot back. Okay. So let's try one more time and see if it's, if it's going to be more exciting now back and the buttons are hidden and nothing happened up here okay so we need to figure out why it didn't work so let's see so let's see right here when we show the quest info we're setting a quest area area to false and the description to true okay actually we can do this inside our um show quest function we can copy these two lines right there and go to show quest and after we have run through all the quest or actually before we can do like this, say quest area, dot say execute true, and quest description set active false. So we've switched them around, so the description is hidden and the quests are shown. Okay, so we're going to have a problem here, but let's try it out before we fix that little problem. So we can see what happens. <clears throat> so we open up, we select the quest, we go back, and now we have four quests. We have gather health potions, kill the skeletons, gather health potions and kill skeletons. And the more I do this, the more quests I get. So I need to remember to delete them again when I do that. And where should we do that? Well, we can actually go right here inside our show quest function, say for each, not for, but for each. And we can say game object, key O, in, wow. What collection do we want to look in? We want to look in quests. Wow. That one well, quests. Okay. So we don't have a collection called quests. And that's because we're not saving our quest at the moment. So let's go to the top and let's just find a place, private list, quest. And this is our quests. This new list, quest. Okay. 
So this is our quest. It contains all the quests that we have, um, or it will contain all the quests that we are on. And where are we going to add that? Well, we will add it in the for each loop here. When we're done, we say quests dot add quest. So every time we add a quest to the quest giver or um, yeah to the quest giver window, we just add the quest to this list here so that we know what we have. And with that done, we can go through all those quests and say destroy geo. And I think I might have made a mistake up here. Let's see. I made this into quest. This should be game object. As so. And down here, we need to make sure that it adds geo instead. We need to add the game objects to the quest list. Sorry about that. So we create this and every time we've done that we just have a reference to our game object and we need to delete those every time we show the um, the quest log again so let's try again come on let's go there we go click back and now we only have the original quests as you can see we instantiate them every time however we also delete them every time we go back so that's one of the things. Now we can go in and inspect our quests and go back. But the accept button doesn't work yet. So we need to fix that. So let's see. Let's make a new function below this called accept. So accept is going to accept the quest. And how are we going to do that? Well, it's going to say quest lock. Do we have it somewhere? Quest lock dot my instance dot accept quest. What quest should we accept? The selected quest. Let's see here. So we don't have a selected quest at the moment, apparently. So we need to create a selected quest. We do that in the top of the quest log or quest giver, private quest, selected quest. So by using the selected quest, we will know which ones, wh which quest we are going to um, um, accept. So let's go to show quest info, because this one is given or ex executed every time we um, show a quest let's see there it is every time we click on a quest so here we can say list.selected equals quest so now we have reference to the quest we are inspecting at the moment and the one we are inspecting at the moment is of course the quest we can accept so we click on the quest we have it selected and with that done we can go down here and we can accept it by adding it in here and when we accept it, we also call a back function so that we go back out. So we save that. Jump back in. Click, click, accept. Oh, we didn't sign it in. Oh, wow. I am so bad at remembering that. I'm so excited to test stuff out that I forget to assign it every single time. Um, quest go window and accept one more time. Apparently I just like building my games and waiting for it to run. There we go. There and accept. Oh, we have a null reference. Let's see here. Quest giver accept doesn't work. Let's see here. So quest giver accept. Maybe selected quest didn't work. Where do we show quest info? Selected quest. Let's see what's null. I can put a breakpoint here and attach it. Or actually. <laughs> I might know what's wrong. Let's see here. Um, our quest log. Let's see here. Where is it? It's right there. So our quest log is, is, is disabled. And that's why. So we couldn't find the quest log. So if you get a null reference right there, it might be because you have disabled your quest log just as I did. So just enable that one again. And then we sh should simply... We actually need to add something to hide it, open and close it at some point. Um, but apparently I've been too lazy to do that. So let's... I don't know. Let's, let's just wait for that for a second. Let's see here what happens. So now the quest log is shown. Um, and I can't see anything. Wow, okay. I, I have to do that. So we need to be able to open and close our quest log. So let's take a little detour and make sure we can open and close that. So our quest log here. And we need to create a function for opening and closing it. So to do that, let's just make a canvas group on it. We don't have that right. Yeah. So we make a private canvas group. So our canvas group is serialized, so we can set it in the expector. It's faster than setting in start. Um, also, our quest log don't start an update. We can delete those. 
what else? Let's just make a open close function. So public void open close. We can use the same function for opening and closing this. So if the canvas group dot alpha is one, well then we know it's open. Then we say canvas group dot alpha zero. Then we say canvas group dot block raycast to false because when it's hidden it shouldn't block the raycast false. Else we say canvas group dot alpha one and we say canvas group dot block raycast to true. Okay. So this function can open and close it. Besides that, we also need to bind the X button. Let's do it right away. So we can make a public void function called close. And the close button is simply going to close everything. So we just take this up here and paste down there. We can also reuse that and write close here if we want to. That doesn't change anything. Like so. So why do we need two functions? One is for key bindings. The other one is for... Um, one is for key bindings. The other one is for us... Um, what's it called? Um, clicking the X button, and the key binding can be put inside the. Um, yeah, where do we want to put it? We can just put it inside here. Um, let's see if we have an update function. We just deleted it, so let's create it again. Um, public void update, and here we say if input dot get key down. Key code dot, I don't know. L. If we press L, what then? Well, then we would like to say open, close. And what do we have inside our inventory right now? I need to rebind something, I think. Let's see here. Um, I have some key bindings in here where I press L, I think. L there. Um, it's for adding potions. Let's just add that to, I don't know, O. So let's O instead. Um, what do we have something on P? I don't have anything on P. So it's P for potions. Let's do that. That makes more sense. Okay. With that done, we can go back to our game here. And Unity, we can select our quest give window. Oh no, sorry. Our quest log. And on the quest log, there is a close button here. The close button needs to run when uh, close the window. So click the plus. Take the quest log, drag it down there, and quest log, and then select the close function. And then we need to add a canvas group to the quest log. So we select the quest log, add a canvas group, set it to zero, and it should be interactable. It shouldn't block raycast right now. If we play now, oh wait, I forgot to assign it. So we take the canvas group and grab it onto the quest log so it has a reference between these two. And we try to run one more time. So I press L, I can open and close my quest lock. Okay. With that done, I can go to my quest giver, click on a quest, select the accept button, and voila, it's inside my quest lock, and I can see all these uh, quest uh, informations here. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founder page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.